Hello and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the repurchase review for January 2024 and December 2023. So I didn't try a whole lot of new products in December, so I decided to just kind of combine the two months, but now our list is pretty long. There were a lot more, a lot more releases in January. So we're gonna go through all of those. I'll tell you what I would purchase again and what I wouldn't, any updates or anything on those products. And then at the end, I typically do a top five for the month, but because we have so many products in a variety of categories, I decide to do a top three by category. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first up, we have Suku Spring Collection. So I have a part one video and a part two video. And I have to say, there are a couple standouts in this collection for me. I personally really like this particular quad. This is the 134 eyeshadow quad. I think this is a gorgeous everyday neutral palette, but it's very, very close to the 01, which is a permanent palette. So I would choose between the two of those. Another standout for me from the spring collection are the liquid luster eyeshadows. And, you know, typically they're liquid eyeshadows. They're nice, but, you know, they weren't really a favorite product of mine when they launched. I really like the three that they just came out with and they seem to perform a little bit better than the ones I have from the permanent collection. So I think maybe the maybe the formula has been tinkered with a little bit because they last longer on my eyes without any creasing. So I'm really loving those, but the star are the new Moisture Glaze lipsticks from Suku. And I have to say, I absolutely love these. These are incredible. They are refillable lipsticks. So you actually purchase the refill in the case separately. My favorite shade is probably this one here, which is number five. You can see it is a purple berry. So it definitely has more purple in there than what we usually see in a berry shade. This is gonna be your high shine finish kind of lipstick, but it blurs the vertical lip lines. So I'm really happy about that. Another great everyday nude shade is number one here. So this is one that I also really like. It's definitely warmer, but I do really like this shade. So I think these are some great shades. The lipstick is definitely my favorite part of the Suku Spring Collection. What I would repurchase again if I were to do it over would definitely be the lipsticks, the Liquid Luster eyeshadows, and the quad that I showed. Next, we have some items from Bobbi Brown. So I picked up some of the new blushes and the new bronzer in light. I think these are all great products. I'd pick up all of these again, but for me, my favorite product from this set would be the Desert Pink Matte Blush. This is one that I've literally been using, you know, a couple times a week at least since I got this. It's just like one of those great everyday blushes. So it's a soft pink with a tiny bit of mauve in there and you can see it blends out nicely. It's pretty neutral. And I just think this is such a beautiful shade and it's one of those shades that if you don't feel like really thinking about what to wear on your cheeks, that is a shade, uh, you know, that's just perfect for that, those no-brainer kind of shades. So that's my favorite of those sets, but I really love all of those products. I would definitely purchase the Bobbi Brown ones again and I am hoping to pick up more of the blushes in the future. Next, we have two pressed powders. So we have the new Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder and the new Burberry press powder, which is called the Beyond Wear Setting and Refining Powder. I think both of these are great. I'd pick these up again. Favorites between the two, it's really hard to say. You know, if I'm going to be going for a long day with my makeup on, I would go for the Clay de Peau. I think it really gives a beautiful finish. It kind of melts into your skin and it really keeps everything looking perfected. You can touch up with this and, you know, kind of refresh everything. So this would definitely be my choice for days where I'm going to have my makeup on for, you know, a long time. If it, you know, I'm going out and I just have my makeup on for the evening or for a few hours or something, I think the Burberry does a great job of blurring. It, this also looks nice all day, so I, you can't complain. This is great all day too. I just think the Clay de Peau looks better on a longer day than the Burberry, but I think they're great powders. Price point wise, the Burberry is a better value because we have 11 grams of product versus five grams of product in the Clay de Peau, and the price point is definitely, uh, less expensive for the Burberry. So 
it, it's a big difference. Um, you know, I think they're both great powders. I'd pick them both up again. We also have the Clay de Poe, the Precious Lipsticks. And I picked up two of the shades. I picked up four and five. And I think these are a great moisturizing, hydrating lipstick. They've got a beautiful sheen to them, yet they're not like sparkly. You don't see like any glitter particles or anything. They're comfortable, really beautiful, very luxurious. I really like these. I'd pick these up again. I am actually hoping they would maybe get the Topaz shade in the future when these go on sale at some point. But I do, I think these are a really great lip product. They are very expensive, so it's definitely one that, you know, you might think, you know, oh, it's very expensive. You use it on special occasions, but I'm gonna try and use it more so I can make sure I use these up. But these are definitely really great lip products. So if you're in the market for something at that price point, something very luxurious feeling, these are a great lipstick and the cases are refillable. They will be selling refills for the lipsticks as well. Next, we have the Soniji Kiaki brushes. And I have to say, I absolutely love this set. She's come out with some really great brushes. You, as you can tell, she's sort of redoing her lines a little bit. You know, so we have new options. Some of the older fundamentals have been gone. They've been replaced by the new fundamentals. This is another new permanent set of brushes. These are eye brushes and we are using the persimmon dye for these. And they are very soft, very luxe, great shapes to fit into your collection. This one here is my favorite, shade number five. It's kind of in between a crease and a shader brush, and I love it. It's just like a great multi-purpose brush. But I have to say, they are softer than I expected. Really love the shapes. The, the set was gifted to me in PR, but I would definitely purchase these. So uh, really great brushes, definitely a winner for me. Next, we have some items from Prada. So I picked up a bunch of the new nude lipstick shades that they added to their range. And I also did a video featuring some other eyeshadow palettes that I picked up from Prada and some additional lipsticks. So definitely a ton of new Prada makeup this month. And I have to say, I love the Prada makeup. It's definitely one of my favorite brands now. I definitely think they were the best launch of 2023. And yeah, you know, I just, I think the formulas are really great. In particular from Prada, my favorite are definitely the eyeshadow palettes. They have different textures and finishes. You've got four shades, they are refillable. And the colors, although they might not look like they're gonna work together, they really do. And so this is one of the newer ones I picked up. And this is one of my favorites. So this is palette number three, I'm just gonna swatch well, let's just swatch all of them. So these are the four shades in palette number three. And I love this palette. This is one that I've really been enjoying a lot. And I think it's just a great palette. Number four is also a favorite of mine. And the lipsticks, I'm really happy with the new shades they released. They have two different formulas, soft matte and the hyper matte. And yeah, I really like them all. So this is B106. And it's just a, such a great nude. So overall, I'm loving all of the Prada items I picked up. If you had to pick one thing to try from Prada, I would definitely start with an eyeshadow palette. And then we have Addiction Tokyo Spring Collection. So the Spring Collection from Addiction, it looks incredible. We have two uh, glow sticks. We also have three liquid lipsticks. And then in Asian countries, there are three quads as well. And we didn't get those here in the US, so I don't have those, but I do have the glow sticks and the liquid lipsticks. And, you know, I think they are all fantastic. These were gifted to me. I was actually purchasing them myself though. When it happened, I was just waiting for the liquid lipsticks to come in. So it was a great surprise to receive those. <laughs> And I have to say the winner for me is definitely this Sober Rose Glow Stick. Now you can use this as a highlighter or you can buff this in as a blush, like a blush lighter. So it's absolutely gorgeous. It's not sticky, it's not tacky. You know, there's no texture. Even when you're piling up the product like this, it really kind of sets. And that's what I love about it. Also, you can see it's not glittery, but you still get a, kind of a soft metallic sheen to it. Um, almost more like a buffed in satin. And I just think it's gorgeous. So this one here is my favorite, it's Sober Rose. And this is going to be number 104P. 
And next we have quite a few brushes. Now I knew that I was going to purchase a lot of brushes th these last two months because Year of the Dragon. I love dragons. These are collectibles. So I definitely splurged a lot, a lot more than I ever have before. But I have to say, I'm so happy that I did. These are definitely collector's items and I'm really happy with these. So narrowing it down to the top three was really, really challenging. I did it, but I would definitely purchase all of these again. No regrets. If I had more money, I would love to get duplicates, <laughs> but um, these are fantastic. So first one here, this is from Koyuto. This is from the Yoshiki series. And this is one of the Year of the Dragon brushes. It is a mix of Red Squirrel and Seibikaho Goat. And they also have this in a Blue Fox version as well. So I absolutely love this. It's such a great domed buffer. And what I've really been using this for is, I use it every day because I just love the way it feels, but I've been using it to buff in my Sisley Blur Expert. And I just think it's a great powder uh, brush. So you can definitely use this for powder foundation, setting powder, finishing powder as well. But that's kind of what I've been enjoying enjoying this brush for. Then we also have this Blue Fox brush from Koyoto Yoshiki as well. This has the monochrome handle, but you can see we have an engraved Chinese dragon here. And I just realized it was upside down, but you can see it's deeply engraved. It's beautiful. The brush itself, I love this shape and you know, it's such a great, I like this for blush. You know, I just think it is such a really incredibly soft, great brush. Uh, I'm very happy with this one. And if this does restock, I am purchasing a second because I also think that this was a really great price. It's still pretty affordable because it's actually just a couple dollars less expensive than the Beautylish Year of the Dragon brush, which I picked this one up as well. I picked, picked up one for each of my daughters as well because we all love dragons and I mean, it's adorable. And of course my daughters, they're a little too young to truly appreciate it, so they'll be saved. But I think these are just totally worth but I just think these brushes are really special and it is the same shape as what we've seen from Beautylish in the past. You know, they kind of do the same shape every year. So I try and pick and choose which handles I really, really want. And this is definitely one of them. I think it's gorgeous. We have squirrel hair here, very soft. You can use this for blush. I like this usually for powder, but it's just, it's fantastic. And then I also have these Sakura brushes. So I actually have a white one as well, which has Saibikaho. And then we have this one here, which is going to be a squirrel and goat. Now with the same handles, there are some other brush heads that you can get as well. So there's a blue fox version of this. And then one that I just picked up, but I haven't used yet. I picked this up from Fude Bobo. They have this one here, which is going to be a really high grade of Saikaho. And you can see it's gonna be a bit more of a domed ball brush. This is actually already washed, so I just haven't gotten to use it yet. So I picked this one up from Fude Bobo. So far, that's the only place I've seen it, but if you love the handles and these are kind of out of your price range, this retailed for, I wanna say it was like 125. So it was about the same as the Beautylish brush. So, yeah, really, I think these are just gorgeous. And I love how they have the flat bottoms, so they are freestanding. And just one more set of brushes that I picked up during the month of December, actually. This is the Refer, this was their holiday brush with the Saibika Ho. So I think this was maybe November, but super soft, nice, great paddle cheek brush. And then they released in their secret shop a version B. And this was actually my personal favorite version when they sent over some testers. I love this 3D shape. You can see the difference here is where we've got the white flowers. Obviously this one's dirty. I used this for blush the other day and I haven't gotten to it. But I really think that these are great brushes. I absolutely love this. So I purchased, they did send me, they sent me this, but they, I also purchased one as well. So I just, I think it's such a great brush. Saibika Ho is, you know, it's hard to get at, especially at that price point. So I thought it was a really impressive deal, really great deal, great quality, and absolutely fantastic. You know, I think these brushes are so great. 
that I actually ended up gifting these for the holidays to some friends. Next, we have the Chantagai Spring Collection. So I do have a full video on this. I picked up the entire collection. I think it's a nice collection, but it's not a love for me. So um, would I pick these up again? I would pick up one of the lip cheeks. If I were to pick one thing from the Chantagai Collection, it would be this lip cheek here in the shade Starflower. And I just think this is a great everyday lipstick shade really nice. Um, so that's why I picked from the Chantagai Spring, but I do think, you know, overall it was just okay. So it wasn't as special as I was hoping for. I have heard that they are making some changes and we're supposed to see some really amazing things from them this year. So I'm still crossing my fingers, but starting to get a little disappointed here already. The first launch I thought was just, it was nice, but not wow. Next, Givenchy Spring for 2024. The eyeshadow palette that they are supposed to be re-releasing, I still have not seen that available, but I will post when I see it. I'm starting to wonder if maybe it's gonna be an exclusive to certain countries. But they did release a uh, loose powder highlight and these bombs. So these are the Rose Perfecto bombs, which I personally really like these, and I love the packaging on here. So I, would definitely pick up the if i'd pick one thing from the collection it would be the bombs you know not only are they a great formula but the packaging's great you can use this on any of the permanent shades as well and it's just you know i think it's great to have on hand you know i love having one of these in my purse pulling this out i love the colors they just make me smile so uh, i would definitely you know i i really like the highlighter as well but it's the bombs that i really love then we have the Natasha Denona Berry Pop Cheek Trio. And this is my first one of her cheek trios I picked up. I'm loving these colors. I think it's great. I love having the mix of finishes in here. And yeah, this is definitely a winner for me. I'd repurchase this. Moving on, we have the Hourglass Lip Pencils. And I have to say, I really like their lip pencils because they're super creamy going on, but then they dry and actually set and they're comfortable. The one thing is their color range definitely runs very warm. So I hope that they expand that and bring out some cooler neutrals. But I would definitely pick up the Hourglass pencils again. Really, I, I think they're really nice. Then we have the Dolce & Gabbana Devotion Collection. So I picked up the highlighter, I picked up a few of their liquid lipsticks, and the mascara. The mascara is a great volumizing mascara when you want something dramatic. So it's a great night out kind of mascara. I really like that one. But my favorite thing, of course, is another lip product. So they actually, I think that their liquid matte lipsticks are really nice formula. So uh, this one here is my favorite shade here. And I think, is this one Gratitude? No, this is 235 Affetto. And I just love this kind of rosy shade with a touch of mauve in there. These are comfortable on the lips. They're not drying. They stay put really well. I think it's a really nice formula. Fragrance wise, you don't smell, you know, a strong perfume scent or anything like that. Actually, the only thing I really smell is a little bit of alcohol. So uh, I think it's a really nice formula and I really like these. As for the other items, the mascara I definitely pick up when I want something dramatic. The highlighter I think is actually a really nice product, but the color was not right for me. So I wouldn't pick up that particular uh, shade again, but I would definitely try some of their other highlighters when they come out in different shades. Now, one thing to note is mine arrived broken and it's a pretty soft powder. So I think, you know, a lot of people chimed in that when they ordered, they also received broken highlighters. So something to know if you can buy it in person, definitely better, but their customer service was great about offering a replacement. So just wanted to make sure that you're aware of any issues that might occur if you're ordering that. Then we have the new Gucci lip glosses. These are a plumping lip gloss. They are, you know, they've got a variety of pumping ingredients in there like spices and so forth. This one here is my favorite of the couple I picked up. And this one is going to be shade, I'm not sure, I think maybe number 118. It's hard to tell exactly what on the bottom here is our shade reference, but this is the, the brown shade in the collection. And this one's my favorite. These are pretty light in color. They do offer plumping benefits. You can see that, um, you know, if you're looking for a plumping lip gloss, they're nice, but 
personally between these and the Dior Lip Maximizers. I still prefer the Dior Lip Maximizers. So just something about them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why I prefer the Dior Lip Maximizers, but something about them just feels a little bit more comfortable on my lips and they definitely don't have quite as much tingling as the Gucci do. So I think they're both great products. It depends what you're looking for. But um, yeah, I would pick up maybe one or two of the Gucci again, like I did, but I would not go overboard with these. Next, we have Dior Spring. Dior Spring was a little bit disappointing. Uh, you know, we have the pink organza palette. We've got the, um, you know, that really light pink blush. We've got some lip maximizers. We have this Mimi Rose palette. This is my favorite of the eyeshadow palettes I picked up. The blush, eh. And the lip maximizers were, were nice, but those are tints of color, so it's really easy to find very similar shades either in their permanent collection or you know from other brands. So I guess the star in this would really be the Mimi Rose, but um, I, I guess, yeah, you know, I still prefer the maximizers over the eyeshadow palette just because this is, it's a little, little more lackluster in pigmentation than I was hoping for. So I think it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm still just, I'm not super thrilled with the Dior spring collection. I was hoping for more, but it's, it's not bad. It's just not great. Next, we have some things from Chanel. And I have to say, there are some things I really like from Chanel. So we have some of the new number one to Chanel um, cheek tints, uh, cheek and lip tints. This one here is Ardent Brick, number eight. It's, I really love these. If you're looking for something kind of glossy on your cheeks with some pigmentation, they are a really beautiful formula. I like these a lot in the summer. Purple Energy, number nine, that is my favorite, but I do really like the three new shades. Then they also released the Eclat de Nuit palette. They had that at boutiques, sold out pretty quickly. It's been pretty hard to find online. It has not released on Chanel.com yet, so that should be coming soon here in the US at least. But I love that palette. I think it's a great palette. So that I would definitely pick up. And then in December, I also picked up some of the Le Beige collection. So this is the Mauve Glossé blush. I think this is a nice blush. I would pick this one up again. Um, I think it's pretty, but it is a lot warmer than I was hoping for. So uh, I'd pick it up again, but it's a like, not a love. And then the eyeshadow palette here, this is the Le Beige eyeshadow palette in Cool. I, you know, I like this one. I'd pick it up again, but again, it's a like, not a love. My favorite is this like lavendery shade here. So yeah, overall, I think the Le Beige was solid, but not like amazing. And I think the number one tints were great. The A Clouds and Nuit was great. Also, we have the Guerlain Cherry Blossom Lipstick, and I love picking up their Cherry Blossom case every year. Their lipsticks are typically kind of a rosy pink. This is shade number 39. Let's put this right next to the Dolce & Gabbana. And it is more of a soft red this time, and I think it's so great that they changed it up. It still sticks with their Cherry Blossom theme, and I love this shade. So. The, it does have some warmth in it, which always makes me think more of like autumn, but I think this is great, especially at this time of year where it's actually released now during winter and not quite spring. So the case itself is really beautiful. You can get these engraved depending on what you purchase, like the Gear Along website will do free engraving. I picked mine up from Saks and they also offered engraving. And yeah, I just think it's great. So if you do get engraving, um, it's here in the mirror. I'm trying not to blind you, but it's like here at the bottom. And yeah, I just, it's a great gift as well. So I would definitely pick this up again. And then we have new Dior lipsticks. And these came out um, end of December, beginning of January. I have to say, I really like the new Dior lipsticks. I think they improved upon their old formula. Not that there was anything wrong with the old formula, but this is actually a reformulation they did well. This is the shade Rose Blues, which is number 429. So it is a different number than the Rose Blues in the Forever Formula. Forever Formula is a little bit cooler uh, and it's still my favorite, but I love this one as well. I think the new formula is great. The mattes are more hydrating, the satins are beautiful. You know, I 
very happy with them. I would definitely pick these up again. And this is what's gonna interest me most, most, <laughs> most likely from the future Dior launches are their lipstick shades. So I'm really happy with them. I thought the old formula, it was nice, it was okay. I'd pick it up for a great color, but it wasn't a favorite. Whereas now the Dior lipsticks are ones that I'm actually reaching for. We also had a couple of Viseart quads in December. This one here is my favorite. This is Tyrion. And you can see we've got beautiful purples in here. We have kind of some neutral, like a peach and a champagne. And then we have some beautiful purples. And I love this quad. There was also a neutral praline a piece or a piece a uh, quad. But this one is the one that stole my heart. Uh, really great quality though with both of them. I'd pick both of them up again for sure. Then we also have the Pat McGrath Chroma Lux pigments. Really like those, especially that lavender shade. I think those are a really great product as well. I would pick those up in special shades. And then we also had the Danessa Myricks Holiday Collection. It was one of these Color Fix and uh, the Chrome Flakes. And then we also had um, Laura Geller Serum Blushes. And those were gifted. I have to say, I think this is really nice. I love this color fix. The chrome flakes are nice, but it's really this color flex, fit, color fix that I really love. And this shade is rock candy. So, I mean, look how blinding that is. So it's a beautiful kind of metallic shade, but notice that the shimmer in here is like kind of your rainbow confetti shimmer. Really beautiful shade. Absolutely love it. And then the Laura Geller Serum Blushes, great for like an everyday thing. I typically don't love serum blushes. Uh, you know, the applicators, I like the product. And I have to say their applicator is really nice and it actually comes with an extra sponge tip as well. So I think that's a really great feature. Plus you can, you know, take them off, clean them, whatever. So really happy with those. And that's it for everything from December and January. Let's go through my favorites. Now we're going to be going through my top three by category from everything we discussed here today. We're gonna to start off with lipsticks and these aren't necessarily in a particular order, but first up, and I have to say this one is my number one favorite choice, it's the Suku Moisture Glaze Lipsticks. Absolutely love these. I think they are phenomenal. And then in no particular order, we have the new Dior lipsticks. I love both the satin and the velvet formula, but I always, I typically prefer satin over a velvet. So those still have my heart there. And then the new Clay de Peau, the precious lipsticks. So those will be my top three for lips. For eyes, we're looking at the Viseart Tyrion quad. I'm just going to swatch this purple shade here. This is my favorite one in the palette. You can see it's really beautiful, soft purple. It's got a little bit of a multi-chrome finish to it. Also has a little bit of gray in there, making it pretty neutral. Also the Pat McGrath uh, pigments. This one here is the Lilac Liaison. And I mean, look at that, <laughs> beautiful. You can see there's a little pink in there as well. And I think it's just a really beautiful lavender shade. This is like great for one of those brightening eye looks. And then probably not a surprise, we have the Chanel Eclat de Nuit. And let's just go ahead and swatch this shade here, which I think is our special shade here. It is a kind of a grungy, pewter, silver, olive green, you know, you kind of have all of those shades kind of mixed in there. And that's, that's the shade that makes a palette in my opinion. So absolutely beautiful, classic arrangement of colors, but it's this shade in particular that really stands out. For cheek products, the Chanel number one in Purple Energy, this is definitely a favorite. Let's go ahead and put this one right here. You can see that is a berry shade with a little bit of purple in there. So that's one of them, as well as the Natasha Denona Berry Pop Trio. Uh, you know, I really think this is a great product. And then, of course, we have the Addiction Tokyo Glow Stick in Sober Rose. I mean, this is just stunning. I swatched this before, but let's just go ahead and do it again. I love this. I love this as blush. I love it as highlighter. It is gorgeous. Actually, right now, I'm wearing another one of their glow sticks very subtly as highlight. And, you know, I just, I love the formula. I love the colors. I love the sheen. Really fantastic products. And then for brushes, it was really hard to choose. I wanted to include the Sonia G uh, number five brush in the new Tradition series, but it kind of got edged out when I added December in because I had to include the Refer 3D brush. So this is the Sybica Ho 
version B. And absolutely love that. So it kind of edged edged out the 70G there, but you know that they're they're practically died. But my other two favorites were definitely, you know, we've got this beautiful splurge project product here. And absolutely love this. It's a daily use product for me. And then this Koyudo Yoshiki monochrome brush with the dragon. So absolutely stunning. And yeah, those would be my top three. And it was so hard to do, but I would definitely purchase all of the brushes that I have again. They are incredible. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know what your favorite things have been recently, what releases you've been interested in or have already picked up. Please share down below in the comments and we have a lot of new things coming soon. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when my next video pops up. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.